Let us pray. Our great God and mighty God in heaven, we thank you because we are called together to come before you so that as we are here in this world, we'll remember you every time as our creator. And also we remember that you are not only our creator, but through the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have become a father. So because of that repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can now call you Abba, Father. We thank you because you brought us into the family. We thank you because of the grace you have given us. And of the path of righteousness you are making us to tread. We thank you because of the strength and spiritual ability that you have given us. And also the concern and the determination within us that come what may. We're going to keep on walking with you. Walking in the light of the gospel that you have given us. Until at last we'll see you face to face. But then while we're here, we know that it's a time of probation where we will have to prove that we really love you. We really want to follow you. Temptations will come, trials, difficulties will come, but we know that you are able to sustain us and make us stand even until the very end. We're looking up to you, Lord, that you will help us. You will uphold us and you will sustain us so that we will never look back and we will never fall in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding today that you will grant us more commitment, more determination, more of your grace, more of your strength and power to follow you through to the end. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today, we're looking at the word of God concerning victory over temptation. Victory over temptation. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. The reference here first is to the Lord Jesus Christ, our merciful and faithful high priest. We are told here that he himself was tempted and that he suffered being tempted. Yet we know that he had the victory. It's telling us that when Jesus Christ put on our flesh, putting on our flesh of necessity means that there will be temptation. And there will be pain. There will be suffering. There will be agony and anguish because of that temptation. But the joy we have is that our Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our great high priest, faithful high priest, he was overcomer. He overcame every trial, every temptation, every enticement from every direction. And because he overcame, he's able to succor us, to support us, or to help us that are being tempted today. It tells us from this passage that temptation is evil and painful. Not that it is sin in itself, but it is enticement into sin. A person can be tempted and yet remain without sin. And yet it is something that a person will have to deal with. A person will have to resist. Otherwise, he will fall into that temptation. Temptation is something common. If it happened to the Lord Jesus Christ, here we have been told it will happen to everyone. But then we don't have to sin. We will be tempted as long as we are in this world, this corrupt world, as long as we're living in the midst of men having flesh and bones, there will be temptation. And it is a common experience with everyone here in the world. And yet, we can be sustained and held by the grace of God not to sin. Not only that, temptation could be so subtle. And the way the temptation comes, if, you, if a person is not very careful, he may not even quickly recognize that this is temptation until he has been completely led away and he has fallen into sin. In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Christ, he was tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. 
he was tempted in all points. He was tempted with all things all around, and yet without sin. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Temptation could become so strong and beyond our natural human strength, coming from Satan, that if one is not careful, the danger of yielding is there. That is why it says we'll need to pray that we'll come boldly unto the throne of grace so that we'll obtain grace and obtain mercy at a time of need when we need grace, support, strength, ability, so that we'll be able to resist the temptation and be victorious that we can come to the Lord and we can pray. In fact, Jesus taught us to pray that we'll not fall into temptation. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lead us not into temptation. It teaches us to pray like this every time. And what a good thing it is that a child of God wakes up in the morning. And he doesn't know all that will be coming during the day. He doesn't know the plans of the tempter that will come during the day. He doesn't know all the secret machinations of the devil and of the messengers of Satan wanting to make him fall that may come during the day. And at the beginning of the day, he looks up to the Lord. He says, Lord, I still put on flesh and I still have blood in my veins. And I know that I'm just a natural human being, even though I'm born again, even though I'm a child of God, but without you without your grace, without your help, I will not be able to sail through this day victoriously because things can come that may be so subtle and strong and beyond my natural strength, coming from Satan, the enemy of my soul. Therefore, he prays, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. And he prays for other people that he knows who are believers. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Bible warns us that there will be temptation in this world. The Bible gives us real stern, strict warning that we should not rest on our oars, we should not take the grace of God for granted, we should not act as if while we're in this world, we have gone beyond danger, we have gone beyond temptation, that we should not think that there is a kind of experience we have got that may ensure us from temptation and we become immune to temptation, that temptation will come. You are born again, we are warned, temptation will still come. Are you sanctified? Are you even have the whole mind of Christ? Christ was sanctified. Christ was holy, within and without. Christ was completely pure, holy, blameless, righteous, spotless, and perfect. And yet, temptation come. came. Therefore, there is no situation or there is no stage in, in Christian life that you can reach whereby you will say you can never be tempted again. Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost? Jesus Christ had the power of the Spirit of God. How God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. And yet, temptation came. Therefore, it means whatever our spiritual level, temptations will come. That's why we are warned against it. That's our point one. Warnings against temptation. Point one, warnings against temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. If you look at the previous uh, part or the earlier part of the chapter, that is this chapter 10, he had been talking about the temptations that came to the children of Israel and that they were not watchful, they were not prayerful, and they did not acquire, they did not receive from the Lord spiritual strength to be able to stand. They fell. And it fell into a lot of shameful, degradating things, the degrading things that they did. And into idol worship, into disobedience, into eating things, sacrifice to idols, even into fornication and adultery. Until many of them died and many of them were destroyed of the serpents. It says, looking at all these things that were written for example that were written for admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Then it says in verse 12, wherefore? Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. 
what the word of God is saying here is that no one should say, maybe those people were not genuinely born again. It says, you believe you are born again. You believe you are standing. You believe that you are a real child of God. Take heed, lest you fall. Uh, some people might say, maybe those people did not have their damnic nature removed. They were not circumcised at heart. They were not fully, entirely consecrated unto God. That's why they fell. The apostle wants us, therefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Some people might say, maybe those people were not resolute, absolute, in their commitment to the Lord. They were not standing with their two feet and standing with complete consecration of heart. It says, you think you are standing. You think you are a child of God. You think that you have made a commitment to the Lord, you will never look back. It says, all the same, wherefore, let him that thinketh a standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Verse 13, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Obviously, we are warned. That we shouldn't just have a careless attitude and feel that there is no danger, there is no problem. That even though temptation may come, that we don't need to put forth any spiritual effort at all. It says we should take heed. And that we should understand temptation is something common to all men. And that when we really look up to the Lord, He will provide a way of escape for every one of us. In James chapter 1. James chapter 1, here we are enlightened as well as one of what will be the result when a person yields to temptation. In James chapter 1 from verse 13, let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot tempt with evil, neither tempted he any man. The Lord wants us to get to heaven. He wouldn't want anything that will discourage us hinder us from getting to heaven. He wouldn't tempt us from evil. Neither will he drive us away from the path of righteousness. When we got saved, it was because he wanted it. He planned it. He loved it. And he gave Jesus Christ so that we who are lost and dead in sins and trespasses will find our way back home and will be in fellowship with him. He wants us to get to heaven. So then, when temptation comes, it is not coming from him. He is not the one enticing us to do evil. But it says in verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see the flesh we put on. You see the world around us. You see the corruption around us. The influences around us. They have the tendency to influence us and draw us away. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. If a person is tempted and he doesn't yield to the temptation, he has not committed sin. Although he feels unhappy, he feels sad, he feels concerned, and he begins to pray, say, no, God, help me. Even though he's sad and unhappy because the temptation has come, that doesn't mean he has committed sin. If he doesn't yield to that temptation and do evil, he's still a child of God. Jesus was tempted. He didn't do what the devil was suggesting. He was still the son of God because he was without sin, though tempted in all points. The same thing with us today, even if you are tempted. But once you have not fallen into sin, fallen into temptation, then it means that you are still standing as a child of God. But if you fall, if you yield, if you give yourself away, if you give yourself to that enticement and temptation, and you now do evil and commit sin, then death, spiritual death, will be the result. Verse 15. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So then we are warned that we should be prepared, and we should be prayerful, so that we don't yield to temptation in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, already I've told you that no one should say, I'm so spiritual. 
and I'm so willing to serve the Lord, that temptation will never come. Because here is what some people think in their minds. They feel, God knows how willing I am, that I want to make heaven, and that my spirit is willing and determined that come what may, I want to see the face of the Lord on that last day. They think that because of that consecration, because of that willingness to serve the Lord and follow the Lord, that temptations will not come. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I know your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Your flesh is weak. Therefore, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. I told you, as long as we're in this world, there will be temptation. In fact, as the population of the world is increasing, temptation will increase. Tempters, temptresses will increase. As uh, the things of the world are increasing, temptation will increase. Not only that, as the devil knows that he has only but a short time, whereby he can do his evil work and fulfill his evil plan, temptations will increase and even become stronger and stronger day by day. That's why we need to pray every time and watch against it. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, Deceiving and being deceived. Evil men. Seducers. That means tempters. Those who will seduce and entice to evil. They will be growing worse and worse. And they will be growing in their methods of deception. Deceiving and being deceived. Therefore, we need to watch and pray. Because we have been warned in the word of God. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And I see a part that, there, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Verse 26. These things have I written unto you, concerning them that seduce you. Therefore, we know that temptations will come. But then, who is the source of all these temptations? And what are they, who are the messengers or the ministers or the servants that the real chief tempter will use to tempt children of God and to discourage them from following after the Lord? We know from the temptations of the Lord Jesus Christ that the chief tempter is the devil himself. That is, the real tempter is Satan or the old serpent. We know what he did at the time of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And we know that he is the one that tempted those people to, to go into disobedience and sin against the law. We know that also at the time of the temptation of Jesus, the Bible says the devil tempted him. And it is still so today. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. From verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, through a subtlety, so your minds shall be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ, the old serpent, that is the devil. He tempted, he beguiled, or he deceived Eve. And here we are told that there is caution, fear, lest we ourselves shall be corrupted or tempted or led away from the simplicity that is in Christ. But then we see that even at that time, the devil used the serpent. Today, does he use anyone? Does he use people in our lives so that we can be, we are tempted and so that there is a tendency or there is an enticement to go into evil? Oh yes, he uses people. He can use members of our own family, of the same blood, bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh. He can use the wife, can use the husband. Not only that, he can use family members to discourage us from following after the Lord. And these family members can bring advice, and they can bring suggestion, and they can even try to help us into a way that is not of the way of God. He can also use human beings all around. That is, he can use sinners men or women, to entice into evil or to promise some things that will lead us away from the Lord or lead us away from our steadfastness in the Lord, our consecration to the Lord, our commitment to the Lord. Or he can use, listen to this, so-called believers. Those who say they are children of God, 
if they yield themselves as instruments in the hands of the devil, they can be used to tempt us in their advice that they give to us, in their suggestions that they give to us, or in their plan to help us. They call it hell, but it can be real temptation to us to go away from the Lord. In this same chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, who sent shall be according to their words. And so we find here that temptation can come from messengers, ministers of Satan, of the devil. And let's look at some examples of how temptations come. Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Cause God and die. Cause God, she said, and die. You know what had happened here? That Job had lost a lot of things. He had lost his cattle, fire burned some, thieves stole others. And his servants, some were killed, and just one came back to report, this is what happened. All his children, they died. And these were great, great things that could bend anyone. These were great things that could turn anyone aside and lead him astray. These were things that would make, that could make anyone bitter, anyone backslide. But then Job was still holding on. Job was still looking up to the Lord. And he determined he was not going to sin with his mouth. Neither was he going to charge God foolishly. But then the wife couldn't bear it. Couldn't stand it. And the wife came and said, What else are you expecting? What else are you waiting for? Why are you still holding on to the Lord? Cause God and die. Why are you still retaining thine integrity? There may be advisors like that. Wife or husband. That will discuss at the table. And give us reasons why we should leave the Lord. Why we should leave the church. Why we should leave following the Lord. Why we should leave holiness and righteousness and sound doctrine. There may be discussion around the table. Or in the room. Or on the bed. From the wife to the husband. From the husband to the wife. And tell one another why this fellow should leave the Bible and leave sound doctrine. And say after all, look at what has happened. So I so disappointed you. Such and such disappointed you. This one happened. But all these things that they're saying happen. You see it after what happened to Job? As you, have you lost ten children all in one day? Have you lost all servants all in one day? Have you suddenly, in one day or one week, uh, turned from prosperity unto poverty all at a go? Have you become the laughing stock of all people all around? Even when all that has happened. Even when all that has happened, Job held on to his integrity. But the wife became the temptress. We should be careful that family members, it may be the mother that will be crying. It may be the mother that will be saying, why don't you don't turn away from the Lord? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Wanting to entice you with her tears to go away from the Lord and to fall from your steadfastness. Or it may be that your relations, aunt, cousin, nephew, others like that will just come all at the same time and they will be pleading with you that this Christianity is too much standing with the Lord is too much and some of them might even say we have known about this uh, Christian thing before and uh, in the earlier days of our lives we were also following this born again, born again and following a gospel living church like this but uh, things change and you see when they left the church and when they left uh, following the Bible that way things are becoming better for them now don't listen to them. Those are the messengers of Satan. Bringing temptation your way that you will fall from your own steadfastness. Then, in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 21. From that time, forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said, 
unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou severest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Here is a believer. A believer in the church. Following after the Lord Jesus Christ, he himself had preached before. He had told people to repent. He had told people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, he just answered a question in this same chapter 16, saying, we know, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen to me. Somebody may know the Bible. He may know Christ. He may know many references. And he might even have been so a source of encouragement to you in the past. But if he yields himself to the devil, he can become a tempter. Here Peter was discouraging the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus will not go ahead, and die for the salvation of humanity. And that he will not give himself as ransom for our sins. That he will not pay for the sins that we have committed. He said, it will not happen unto you. You see, when a believer is giving you advice many times, because the person claims to be born again, a child of God, a person who knows the Bible, a person who is a soul winner, and a preacher himself, or perhaps even a worker, and he's saying, oh, if that happened to me, this is what I will do. If they do that to me in this church, this is what I will do. Ah, they did that to you. You suffered like that. They lied against you. And they cheated you like that. And that is what they did against you in the church. If that happened to me, I'm telling you, this is a step I will take. Because the person happens to be a believer. And because the person knows the Bible, what you'll just do is that you fall into that temptation. And a fellow does not realize at that time that at that time he's giving that kind of advice. He is actually becoming a servant and a slave of the devil to be used of the devil. It says, when Peter said that to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord knew that at that time he was in the flesh. The Lord knew that at that time he was not spiritual. He knew that at that time he was being used of Satan. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. That an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. How careful we should be. That whatever direction temptation may be coming from, and whatever shape or whatever form temptation may take, we will recognize that it is temptation and we will not fall into it. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. From verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. Here a great temptation came. Jesus Christ had told his own disciples. And John was there. Peter was there. And these were the two apostles here. Peter and John. He had told them. Freely have you received. Freely give. And they came over to Samaria. And by laying hand of hands. The people received the Holy Ghost. And then Simon came to them. And this Simon professed to be a believer. This Simon professed that he was a child of God, that he had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, had forsaken his sorcery, had forsaken all his evil things, and had even been baptized in water. And he came to offer money, saying, Give me this also, this power also, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Now you may not understand how strong this temptation is. It can come to you like that. Somebody may just attend church, and then he says he's a believer. And then he sees you ministering in with great anointing, with great power. And then it, he asks you, he says, uh, are you a full-time preacher? Oh, you say no. I'm just uh, a preacher here and I'm, you know, just helping in the church work in the district. And he says, uh, when are they going to make you a full-time preacher? Because you, you, are, you are marvelous. You are mighty. You are great. The anointing on you, the power on you, and your ability to convince people, lead people to the Lord. I have never seen anything like this before. And uh, you say, well, I thank God, be praying for me. And then he comes back and he says, uh, I'm thinking about something. That I could buy land. I could give you money. And we can establish a new church, a new ministry. And, it can, and whatever salary you want to get, whatever you are getting in the place of work where you are now, I will double it. And I will give you all the money you need and you and I can start a new thing together. You, you may not see that that is temptation. If you say, I'll pray about it, you are falling already. You are falling already. You want to sell the gift for money. 
you want to prostitute the things that God has given you. A money-minded person has come. He wants to make business out of the work of God. And now he says, he offers you money, let us start this, let us do this. Or it may be that other people will come to you and say, now you, you are working in this church and you are preaching in this church, are you on full time? You say yes. And how much are they paying you, by the way? And you mention that little amount. They say, what? A person like you? Even myself, that I'm not preaching as much as you are preaching, I don't know as much as you know. Look at what I'm getting. Out of this uh, preaching thing, but how can they be paying you something like, come over, come over. If you come over to this other side, look at the money you can get. Look at the gain you can make. Look at the places you can go. Look at the people you can touch. If you fall into that, do you see that's a great temptation? And if you fall to that great temptation, that means you are not really standing. And the moment you begin to sell the gift of God for money, then you have gone away from the Lord. We should be very careful that we do not allow any tempter and any temptation to lead us into what is evil. In 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2 from verse 17. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest unto whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, though those that were clean escape from them who live in error. It says here that sometimes they will come with great swelling words of vanity to bring temptation. Therefore, we shall watch and we shall be sober and we should not allow any of these things from people to lead us away. Now you have seen, temptation comes from the devil, but it comes through a lot of things. It can come through your own flesh. It can come through your own inordinate affection, inordinate desire. It can come through your own depravity and corruption. And it can come through people as well. People that are close, people that are far, it can come from men, it can come from women, it can come from any direction. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to resist the devil. Resist the devil and resist the temptation with every ounce of spiritual energy that we have, so that by the grace of God we shall not fall. In First Peter, this leads us to point three: resisting the tempter. First Peter chapter five, from verse six: Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him. For he careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, Strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here we are told we need to cast all our cares upon him. You see what makes temptation strong is when you are carrying your load yourself. When you have some things you are looking for. And when you are not casting all your cares, all your need upon the Lord. Also what makes temptation strong is when we are proud of who we are. Of what we've got of what we can do, of what we have done. But you humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Also what may make us to be careless and to fall without knowing is when we are frivolous and when we are careless and when we are lukewarm, nonchalant. But then it says, be sober, be vigilant. Then it says in verse 9, resist steadfast in the faith. We must resist the devil and we must resist every form of temptation. How do we resist the devil? How do we resist temptation? The way Jesus Christ resisted. He resisted with the word of God. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 from verses 3 and 4. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You see that temptation? To satisfy the flesh. And the temptation will come many times. To satisfy the flesh. If you get another job, you'll be able to have more money. More money means more food, more convenience, more clothing, more property. Satisfying the flesh. If you leave this place and you go to another church, you'll be able to do whatever you like. Painting, farming, jewelry, whatever. You see that? Still the flesh. It is an appeal to the flesh. 
if you give bribe or if you take bribe you'll be able to have more than you are looking for when you get more than you are looking for what does it result in food shelter clothing you see that all for the flesh and so the tempter came and said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread but he answered and said it is reaching that's how to overcome that's how to win the victory that's how to resist the tempter he cannot stand the sword of the spirit which is the word of god he said it is reaching man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god the reason why many people fall is that they're living by bread alone bread is the most important thing to them food the most important thing to them the things of this world that will feed the flesh and satisfy the flesh build up the flesh that is the most significant thing to them but you see when you exalt the word of god the will of god the glory of god above every need of the flesh you will not easily fall into temptation and then in verse 5 then the devil taketh him up into an holy holy city up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest thou at any time dash thy foot against a stone you see if you have pride the pride of life and you want to show off you want to show how great you are how favored you are and how close to the lord you are and how the promises of god are for you a person that has pride the pride of life that can be something that the devil can use in uh, making the temptation of his life strong but then jesus said in verse 7 unto him it is written again thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god verse 8 again the, te the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and he said all these things will i give thee if thou fall down and worship me that is what has made many people to fall sometimes the kingdoms of this world are offered to them politics sometimes it is that the material things and the what glitters which is not gold they are offered to them and they fall just into it that way they're looking for some material things they are not looking at the future they are not looking at heaven they are not looking for the coming of the lord they are looking for having everything eyes can see eyes can behold in this world that's why they fall but you know if the things of this world are not important to you popularity it doesn't matter to you fame is not your concern material things you don't count them important food shelter clothing job whatever even though these things uh, moderately may serve you but then you say i would rather have heaven i would rather have the word of god i will rather live and be in the will of god and people may praise you it doesn't amount to anything in your mind you see those are the people that will be able to stand then we're told in verse 10 that then said jesus unto him get thee hence satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve then the devil leaveth him and behold angels came and ministered unto him were to resist the devil and were to resist all the temptations whatever the forms temptations are taking proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 my son if sinners entice thee consent thou not how do sinners entice many ways but let me show you one way in genesis chapter 39 genesis chapter 39 reading from verse 7 and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon joseph and said and she said lie with me but he refused and said unto his master's wife behold my master watereth not what is in the house with me in the house with me and he saith, he has committed all that he has to my hand there is none greater in this house than i neither has he kept back anything from me but thee because thou art his wife how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against god there was nobody that would have known about it perhaps and yet he said god will see me god will know about it and it is great wickedness and sin before the lord he refused 
in verse 10. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. And it came to pass, about this time, that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house that were uh, there with him. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and got him out. You will see that this man really loved the Lord, and he wanted to remain holy. And he resisted her temptation in every way. Sometimes that is what it will take, to run out. Because Jesus Christ himself even said, If thine hand offend thee, or will lead you to temptation, cut it away and throw it from you. If it's the eye, pluck it out, throw it from you. This is what it will take. You see, today we have learned about how to have victory over temptation. We see the warning, we see the sources of temptation, and we see the necessity of resisting the tempter and every form of temptation. Rise up on your feet and you tell the Lord. If you are falling already, you pray and tell the Lord that you want to be restored. You want to come back to the Lord so that you will not die inside in defeat. So that you will not go to hell. If you are standing already, you are not living in sin by the grace of God. You have overcome up till this point. Remember, let him that thinketh a standard take it lest he fall. Call upon the Lord. Let him give you strength. Let him prepare you for tomorrow. Let him prepare you for the coming week. Let him prepare you for the rest of your life. That by the grace of God, you will stand, you will not fall.